Hey, what's up everyone? In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is using bullet soft bodies to recreate this effect. Okay, so I'm really excited to do this tutorial. Let's just jump right into it and get started. Here we are in layout. We have our Lamborghini, our ground plane, and our cloth. The first thing we want to do is move the cloth up above the car because what we're going to do is drop this cloth onto the car and then save out the transformed object of the cloth and then use that to pull it off of the Lamborghini. Now what you're not seeing here is a proxy object that I have modeled over the car and it's very low poly and when I say very low poly I mean look at that cage. So let's go to the proxy and turn transparency to zero. So I modeled this over the Lamborghini just because it's going to be able to simulate a lot faster and the effect looks like it's on top of the car and you're not gonna have those long waiting times. So once you load that in, just turn the transparency to 100% and then it won't render. Let's go back to texture shaded solid. So let's select the cloth, go to effects tools and turn on deforming bodies. Then we'll use the up and down arrow keys to switch between the objects and you can see that right here is the Lambo. We're not going to add anything to that, but for the proxy, we're going to make that a static object and then the ground a static object as well. Another thing we want to do is go to the cloth, bring up the object properties by hitting the P key, and the subdivision order is going to be last because this is actually a sub D object. If you're working with um, just a hard body object that hasn't been subpatched, you don't have to change the subdivision order at all. But in this case, we have to set it to last. So if we just scrub through the timeline, or for instance, go to frame 10, you can see it starts working. And let's just jump ahead to frame 80. Okay, so these are just with the default settings, but we're gonna adjust a few of them. So let's go to the world properties. You can see we have our two static objects and the cloth. So for the cloth, let's go to item, and we're gonna change a few settings here. For linear stiffness, what that is is basically uh, how resistant the edges are to stretching. So a higher value will attempt to maintain the length of those edges. And the angular stiffness is how resistant the object is to bending. These two settings are really important. So for linear stiffness, what I'm gonna do is set that to 10. But before I do that, I'm just gonna switch off enable dynamics so it isn't simulating after changing each setting. So for linear stiffness, set that to 10. Angular stiffness, I'm going to set that to 0 0.1, so a very low value. Damping, basically, um, I like to think of it as reducing the uh, drasticness, if that's even a word, <laughs> of the cloth. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to one. And the last thing we wanna do is set the collision margin to 10 millimeters. And that will just move it away from the proxy object uh, a little bit more than normal. Let's go ahead and turn on enable dynamics and let that simulate. All right, so that looks much better than what we had. And all is looking well. Okay, so let's just find a frame that we wanna use for the transformed object. And again, this is the frame that we're going to be using to pull off of the car. So I'm gonna say right about there, frame 28. We can close out a bullet dynamics. Before we save this out, we wanna go into the object properties for the cloth and make sure that the display subpatch level is set to zero. And the reason we're gonna do that if we go into texture shaded solid wireframe is because now it will be all quads. If we set that to three, the object is going to be triangulated and really dense when we save it out, so we don't want that. So change that to zero. And let's go to File, Save, Save Trans Object. I'm just gonna make that 03, save that. 
Okay, so now let's hit the minus key and get rid of that cloth. Go back to shaded solid. And at frame zero, we're going to go to items and we're gonna load object. And let's load in the transformed cloth. All right, so it comes in exactly as you would expect, exactly how we saved it out. Let's go back into the properties and set the subdivision order to last. Go to FX tools and now let's make this a deforming body. Let's turn off enable dynamics. And what we wanna do now is add two nulls to the scene one right here and one right here and those are going to be kinematic bodies and that's what we're going to use to actually pull the cloth directly off of the car so let's go to items and add a null we could just call this left and hit ok let's go to the top view by hitting the two key and move that right about there let's clone it by hitting Control c hit ok and move that over here and let's rename that to right. And I'm naming these based off of my perspective, not the front of the cars. So let's hit the four key to go back to perspective. Go to effects tools. And let's click on this little icon here, which will bring up the current items list. Shift and select the left and right one. X out. And let's add a kinematic body to those. Now let's jump ahead to frame, say, 30. And with auto key on, we're just going to move these away. Right about there looks fine. And it automatically made the key since auto key is turned on. Now what we're gonna do is jump back to frame zero, turn enable dynamics on, go into the world properties. You can see we have both of them selected. Let's just turn on draw collision shapes. And you can see that it put a box around our nulls. We can go to item and let's change that to a sphere. All right, and let's check out how big those are. Okay, you can adjust the size of the, um, uh, the collision shape by just hitting Shift H and scaling the, the nulls down. You can see they shrink. Hit the T key to go back to the move options. Let's go to the item tab and check out some of the settings here. For kinematic objects, everything looks fine for the default. But we want to go into the deforming body and again just adjust a few of the settings here. I'm going to change the collision margin to 10 millimeters again. And for linear stiffness, let's change that to about 90. And for angular stiffness, a little higher than when the cloth dropped. Um, not 0 0.1, but let's try 0 0.8. And the damping, uh, which will make the effect a little less drastic, let's set that to 3 for now. And again, you know, you're going to have to play with these settings regardless of what type of car you're using and how your proxy object was modeled, but let's just try these out for now. Um, we can turn on self-collision so that the cloth will interact with itself. And there's one more thing I want to do. I want to go into the proxy object, and I want to lower the friction. Let's try 20%. Let's X out a bullet. And I'm going to skip ahead to frame 80 just to see how our settings look. Okay, so we're done simulating. Let's check out what we have. And it seems like just with those settings that we punched in, it looks really nice already. Let's go ahead and play through that. Yeah. Wow, that's really nice. <laughs> It was really fun to do this tutorial because uh, you know a lot of people have been asking this question and I was even wondering how uh, we'd go about dropping the cloth onto a really high poly model like this Lamborghini. But just by modeling about a 50 polygon uh, proxy object over it, it simulates so fast and you get really nice results uh, just with the settings that we punched in. But obviously, you know, you're going to have a different model and uh, maybe a different dense uh, cloth. So you play with the settings to get the effect you're looking for. But uh, in this case, I hope you learned how to do it. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.